Hey everybody, I'm here at the HPOCA Summer Show in Canandaigua, New York. It's been a busy day meeting people and things have slowed down a little bit, so give me a little chance to do some recording. I thought I'd walk along and um, regular viewer and uh, commenter Aaron. This is 1955. He just finished up like a week ago. Looks beautiful. His 1850 which I think he did a year or two ago. I remember him posting on Facebook about it. 1800 C-Series. And, um, oh, looking at this one, we determined this 2050 is actually a 2150. Still a good tractor to have, nothing wrong with that. It does not have the turbo on it, but all the rest of the codes on the transmission, on the tag uh, says it's a 2150. Nice original 2255. Oh look, an 1800A front wheel assist. That's fresh from Arnie Meyer's auction. Boy, that thing runs nice. Oh, and here comes... <laughs> I think I got you. Looking for a gator, Chris. How do you lose a gator? I don't know. You lost a gator? We lost a gator. You asking, I hear him asking. Around. Hey, Greg's gonna come down for burgers and dogs. Yeah, I was uh, heading over that way and no one was there, so I thought I'd come over and try to do some... Uh, 15 minutes. All right. So yes, nice original uh, 2255 here. What did I determine? That was a late one. Um, 1955. Someone's probably going to ask whether with these lines on here and cooler lines. Coolant. Someone did a really nice job of... Uh, must be a pipe fitter or something. They're just for uh, running back for the cab heater. Neat. 1900 industrial. I would say this was a cable plow tractor in a previous life. A couple little giveaways on that. Um, First off, this notch here, they had a big uh, closed center hydraulic pump that drove off the front of the crankshaft and the hoses came out from that right there. Um, most of these were went to Parsons and they'd have a big boom on the front to carry the cable, the roll of cable that they're plowing in. And then um, the uh, creeper drive was actually just a neutral position and you could put your transmission in gear and then that closed center pump on the front drove a hydraulic hydrostatic motor that went in here, got gear reduction here, went through the PTO clutch, and then that connected to the input shaft on the transmission. So when you're burying cable, you just put that other transmission in neutral, the uh, what would have been a creeper, or looks like a hydropower. Then you select the gear on the main transmission that you want to use. First is probably what you're going to do because you're wanting to go slow because they're putting that cable down there. Then there'd be levers up on the lever on the fender, and you just push your lever. That would drive this. Now it's uh, driving the transmission. You'd have to engage the PTO clutch too. Driving the transmission, move you forward, and you could move the lever the other way and go backwards and creep along and bury your cable. So very customized thing. They would uh, send them to Parsons and uh, as a tractor, and they would add all their stuff on and make the modifications. Oh, there's Anthony with his uh, beautiful 2255. Definitely some nice tractors here. I've heard they are up over 300. Oliver, uh, Hart Par, Clay Track, crawlers, tractors, implements, all that together. That's really impressive. You know, as I get older, it used to be I'm like, eh, why do you need the extra steps? Now I'm starting to understand. few uh, front wheelers uh, upstate New York seem to be pretty good front wheel assist country uh, the owner of this one was telling me uh, this one was a originally or a two-wheel drive with a little option a little long pinion shaft to upgrade it to some forward wheel front wheel assist and someone did at some point in its history yeah. 
1850 gasser, 1850 diesel. These look like the, they're uh, saddlebags, whatever. <laughs> it's like they came from the same home. 1955 with a Cummins conversion. 1950T. Let's do just a little more, then I'm gonna go get some burgers. Cockshut 1850. It's got a little bit going on. Some green paint showing under the red. Um, sometimes you see that on the cockshuts. They take a green one and paint it red. Yeah, green there, green there. Or it could have been out of a green tractor. Someone had to repower it or something, but. A lot of that from the factory and this one must be about a 65 because you got this tan paint showing and it's underneath the hood too the early 1850s all the 50 series cock shuts were tan paint basically from here up the engine was red fenders were this tan color and then somewhere in mid 65 they started painting all that stuff red a lot less work I'm sure and so whether this was a farmer repaint, it was kind of looked like brush strokes there. So let's look at the serial number and see how close I am. It's missing. What other ways could I look? It's probably an early enough engine. It doesn't have the date code in the serial number. Man, I'm striking out here. Water drain. Still a pretty nice unit. I'm guessing a cab at one time. You can see the line there where the red paint ended and I'm guessing the cab was pointed, painted down there and when they took the cab off, the cab probably included floor panels so they had to find replacement ones. They found one off a of green, an Oliver instead of an 18, or a cockshot 1850. And that probably explains the green paint here. You can also see a line here where the cab probably, and yeah, right here. Yeah, this was definitely a cab tractor at one time. I think they look good with the tan paint, the two-tone. Wouldn't mind having one someday. And the wheels were repainted white. That way they switched the wheels to white when they went to the single color red and got rid of the tan. So, uh, yeah, I would say this one's uh, early 65. They did make some in 64, not a whole lot. Pretty neat. Let's see, oh, I was talking to someone. This one, it's a 1750. It's got a long pinion shaft in it. One odd thing is it's missing a, um, well, I don't even have it. Yeah, it's got the single uh, brake latch. There ain't even a hole drilled in the uh, second brake pedal. That's something the 1750 specials, 1850 specials had. Well, that's odd, but 1750, 1850 specials only had one remote. They only had one headlight. Um, what other features did they have? There's a few things. But this is uh, unique. It's a later one with a three-speed underslung front axle. And, uh, and like I say, it's got the um, long pinion shaft. Let's just go around the side and we can see why we have that. You can kind of see it down here, hopefully. Down here, the casing comes out a lot farther, and so it has a different uh, lube line to get out there. And then the other giveaway is no speedometer. And that's only on 17s and bigger, because the 1650s didn't have a speedometer, and 1550s were not set up for four-wheel drive. But yeah, nice original lighter socket. And it's a nice tractor. Someone's taking good care of it. Oh, yeah, this is, uh, someone said this is George's uh, 1955. It's rough. He's got a lot of work ahead of him, but he hasn't had it very long, so. We'll give him a pass. <laughs> 
I like this 1855. That's a straight tractor. Straight sheet metal. Oh, look at that air conditioning even. Huh. Oliver Wagon Jacks, but not Oliver Corporation that made tractors, a different Oliver. Now we're only a hop, skip, and a jump from Canada. Probably less than an hour's drive, about an hour. So you see a few more cockshuts in this territory. They wander over from Canada, but they're, for those of you that don't know, once a white bought cockshut in, I believe that was 62, 63. I don't remember for sure, but the cockshut did have their own line of tractors at that point. And when white bought them, they discontinued cockshuts tractors and just rebadged Oliver's as cockshuts and sold them in Canada. And they were of course red because cockshut was already red. Eventually, all around 73, 74, as a white name was getting phased in, they switched to a, um, oh, like the 2255s were always called the white 2255 and not a cockshut, although one or two I think did slip out with cockshut decals. Nice looking T. 2150 with a Cummins conversion, B series Cummins in it. And another 2255. I would say the engine has been transplanted. Oh, it's the next day, and got a moment here. Try to walk along some of these older ones. Got a nice lineup of heart pars down here. Interesting, it's got so much red on the lower part of it. I wonder if that's someone's old customization. Or what the scoop is on a red steering wheel. Makes me think I should get that 1827 running. There's all sorts of things I need to do. They've got construction stuff moving dirt. That's always fun to watch. If you don't believe me, go by any construction site and where there's a hole, there'll be 10 guys looking in it. Dundee, Michigan. This one yeah. came from my area. <laughs> okay. Yeah, both these 2850s came from Dundee, not too far from me. If you happen to uh, see your tractor in this video, give yourself a shout out in the comments. I'm liking this 70. I'm not sure if it's original or just an older repaint. Still got just nice and straight. I'm going to say older repaint because you can see there's two sets of decals, but still a very straight, nice tractor. Steel cutoffs and one fender uh, took a beating. I guess both of them got a little bit still. Not too often you can find them in this kind of condition. There's a 2850 that's just, that's showroom quality there. My grandpa had one and, and my um, aunt and uncle now have it and I've talked to my uncle, he would like to get it running. I've told him I'd come over and help him 
I guess one of these days. That would make a great video. I've never worked on anything that old, so I'd probably have to be uh, picking someone else's head to make sure I didn't miss anything. They've got these uh, oilers up here, and I think you can uh, hand crank it to pre-lube everything, and then they drip down on different parts, pistons and rods and things inside, and, and then you can see through the little sight glass there to make sure they're dripping, and you can count the drip rate to adjust it to so it's not using too much oil but it's getting enough to where it's getting lubricated so yeah it's it ran when parked so you know shouldn't be too hard to get running john goodison oh this is a canadian uh heart bar or sold in canada G940, it may have the uh, Oliver side panel on it, but you see all the yellow paint peeling off. That's all a G940 was, was a, uh, should have a Minimo tag. It's been scratched up so much. I'll try to get that seal number so I can verify it. But the biggest giveaway is they did cast a new grill for them. Give them more of a minimo identity. And then we talked earlier about cock shuts just basically being an Oliver sold in Canada after 62, somewhere in there. Stutzman Farms of Indiana. They oh Indiana, they had Pennsylvania, that makes a difference. Whew, I wonder if that's their fuel tank. Nope, it looks like it's their hydraulic tank. Interesting. This tractor. Yeah, what the heck do they do with it? Here's the pump. We're trying to figure out what's uh I'm almost wondering about cabbage. I don't know. It's an interesting setup. Here's how it looked in the late 1960s. Interesting. Oh, Harpar 70, a 99. I do have one of these. Water pump leaks on it. Another one to get fixed. Runs great, but I gotta get that water pump fixed. I just need to pull it off and figure something out. I can't find a kit, but I could probably improvise something. Beautiful 88. Very nice 2255. Dover, PA. Nineteen forty seven sixty. That's right towards the end of production. In case you're wondering what words I'm talking about. something you don't see too often cultivators on a tractor tiptoe wheels wisconsin oliver nut just had a couple of videos where he uh, mounted up some cultivators and actually went out in the garden and cultivated them i hear a detroit but i bet it's probably yeah it's that oh uh, Ho, we'll call it a ho. All cable driven. Uh oh, someone's texting me. We'll be right back. 60 industrial, that's pretty cool. 
they actually welded on uh, mountain blocks more like the supers so you could bolt stuff onto the industrials they didn't on the ag tractors back then some green paint under there the orangey paint you're seeing would have been probably the original color and then it got repainted red at some point Part of the history, it doesn't seem like the industrials get as much of attention. I think that little uh, splash of color in a collection, you know, some orange or yellow kind of livens things up. Nice 80 standard. We had one of these in the boneyard and dad sold it to a collector. I'm surprised he didn't keep it and restore it, but don't know whatever happened to it. The breeze is picking up, so hopefully that ain't bothering you too much. These are cockshut built cockshuts and not uh, Oliver built cockshuts. Oh. oh, this one's for sale. And that one down there. I tend not to put the for sale information in because 10 years from now when this video is still on YouTube and people watch it for the first time, they're gonna call that poor guy wanting to know where his tractor or if they can buy his tractor for the underinflated price of nine or back in 2023. So we know what's gonna happen. 77 diesel, I like that. Nice 66 wide front. Band brakes, so it's an early one. Nice 70 wide front. stay off tractors they saw me coming this is the early wide front for uh, it would have been on a fleet line I don't think they offered that wide front on a super the cat with the cast center that was only like the first couple years of the fleet line series but it fits it bolts up it's not a problem just in case anybody was wondering there are some pullers here Like, uh, another one for sale. Sixty six, seventy seven, eighty eight. It's like all owned by the same person. Cockshut 60. For a while, Cockshut uh, didn't have make their own tractors. They farmed it out to mostly Oliver. Um, I do believe Alice Chalmers made some for them. If someone knows better, and correct me down in the comments. But uh, the Cockshut 60 here, that's just an Oliver 60. But this uh, they were separate companies at this point. Cockshut just contracted with Oliver to build tractors for them. And then in the late 40s, they finally came out with their own designs and and started building their own tractors and eventually got swallowed back up and part of the family again. Beautiful 70 standard here. Yeah, definitely getting in the pulling row here. I think that's pulls last night. It's supposed to be pulls tomorrow night. Also supposed to rain, so uh, not sure what's going to happen there. Time will tell. I like that. Is that 80 or at 1828? It is an 80. 80 standard. Oh yeah, it says on the gas tank. Cockshut version of the same thing, once again. Just contract built by Oliver for Cockshut. Is this one an 80 or an 1828? This one is also at 80. If you're wondering where your serial number is on some of these, on the 80, brass tag right on the side of the engine there. On the 70, brass tag on this side of the engine.
1827 row crop serial number 1673 been in the same family since it was new that's cool definitely has the patina but that's awesome that's been in the same family all this time This Super 55 looks fresh and everything looks new on it. He even painted the wheels green like they're supposed to be for that year. It's like a fairly early one. They originally had a uh, soft plug and a brake cover here. I think the idea was you a provision for running a shaft out and then you could use that to drive a fertilizer applicator or a planter and so that shaft drives the rear axle and so it's going to turn proportional to ground speed so it'd be a good place to pick up a ground drive speed but they didn't I don't know if they ever implemented that or not later models had that cap just gone and uh, open or complete cast cover Six sixty. Well, let's cut over to this row. I'm making better time than I thought. Got to meet a lot of people yesterday. That was awesome to see uh, put faces to names and meet everybody. Didn't give me as much time to record, but I'm getting it today, so it's all good. brought last year at the summer show Mike Calsum shacked up in my camper and he forgot and left his sleeping bag so I brought it with me to give back to him brought it in today and I noticed if you're walking around with a I don't know, let's just say it a worn sleeping bag under your arm no one bothers you so life hack <laughs> If you want to get something done, just carry a sleeping bag with you. Oh, I wonder, uh, AJ Belner and Maumee, Ohio, they are not far from us. I've been to their place before. They're not an Agco dealer anymore, but they picked up New Holland. They're still in business, last I knew. This might be Larry Widner's tractor. Ah, pretty 60. Kind of wish Dad and I had waited to restore the 60 until we had a little more painting experience. But it is what it is, and first tra tractor dad and I restored together so I don't plan on redoing it it looks good not as good as some of the later ones I've done but I guess the memories have value to me 80 standard and an 80 row crop nice combo nice restorations seems like last time I was here which was 2016 and they featured Oliver there was a lot more cleat cle tracks um, I mean they're a bit of work to haul Not that much worse than a tractor, but this one's in really nice shape. Super 44 with white wheels. Now, some people will get bent over this, but I have dealer sales sheets. I think that was 1959. They moved Super 44 production to Charles City, Iowa. South. Um, there was two plants in South Bend, number one and number two, and they closed number two after the strike moved on number two made tractors made the super well the 990 950s and the the super 44 they never made the 440 there 
So the original thought was probably to discontinue the Super 44. There was enough interest when they got them to Charles City. They built another run and it said right on the build sheet, they called it a Super 44, but it would ship with white wheels and grill right on the uh, dealer price sheet. So this could be a repaint, but I'm not seeing any yellow poking out underneath or anything. And all the badge has been painted over, so it's hard to say for sure, but it could be a factory uh, white wheeled Super 44. I've seen a couple of them now. I used to have a 2844. I decided I like tractors with starters on them. <laughs> it needed some mag work, which ended up, the guy that bought it, it ended up being uh, a simple fix. So he got a good deal, but he was happy. I'm happy. So it's all good. 70 standard. I just like that sheet metal. Nice patina. I can appreciate both. I know the work it takes into going, goes into making a, doing a paint job like this and, but they're also only original once and, but sometimes they're just far enough gone, but it's your tractor. You do with it what you want. I guess we'll cover this tractor first. I mean, it's a 550, 1964. A little bit of green showing here, but that's not uncommon on industrials. I'd say it's an industrial, but even neater is the Oliver 960 brush hog, brush, brush cutter, brush hog, bush hog is a brand name. So uh, I think they just called this a rotary cutter. Um, they made this in a fully mounted like this and they also had a pull type and um, I bid on a pull type one years ago and and then it was they used it to mow all the grass before the auction and I should have kept bidding on it but it got up there high enough to where I I stopped I think it got up around 500 bucks and in retrospect I haven't seen another one for sale I think the other ones I've seen have all been uh, mounted so I think that was the only pull type I've ever come across. I do not know who made those for Oliver, but maybe this tag will say. It says Oliver Corporation. <laughs> Chicago, Illinois. I don't think Oliver built this, but... Oh, I'm being hailed. Oh, that's the end of this row. We'll stop at the 660 and I'll see what the wife, uh, no, yeah, no, that's not the wife. A little Oliver 440, the white paint's been touched up in the front here. Structure is three point inch, three cultivator, rear cultivators. Has a bolt pulley, that's not terribly common. I like the rotary hoe attachments on the front, those are neat, you don't see them very often or at all. Oh, 88 LP with a nurse tank. <laughs> I'm guessing they're not sure. There's probably a leak on the main tank, and that's the best way to get her going, get her around. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. It's a rare tractor. And the vertical, vertical tank, it's got super sheet metal on it, but definitely a fleet line frame. And I think the vertical tank makes it earlier. Then they switch to a horizontal tank. I think I may smell LP now. I wonder how long a tractor will run on a gas grill's worth of LP. I don't have a lot of experience with the LP tractors, so. Another 440. So it said this tractor was bought in Basilla, Iowa. It's come away. So like an 80. Power booster drive. Oh, back to the 440. Got the cultivators on that. Some info on this one. This was uh, front rear, uh, front rear wheel weights. Cockshut 20. This is one of their uh, ones that Cockshut built themselves. Ward's twin row. 
Now the relationship here is that's basically a Cleat Track General. And um, so built by Cleat Track, Cleveland Tractor Company. And it was their, I think, only attempt at a wheel tractor. Had single front wheel, all of them did. Pretty much looked like this, but with Cleat Track orange paint. But they, uh, I think they farmed them out to a couple different companies to sell as their own. Nice straight 770. A little touch up paint on it, but I think with some elbow grease, that tractor could be a beauty. 77, once again straight. That's half the battle. You can paint them, you can buff them, but sometimes knocking dents out can be a challenge. later 770 what year is this one 64 seems like they made a lot in 64 I, I see a lot of shows it's got the power traction hitch on it I do not have any with power traction hitch it's got a draw bar in the middle and then there's claws that you can take out with that pin and put in so you can hook up your uh, either fully mounted or semi mounted the idea was you could pull the hitch up transfer a little more weight to the tractor get more traction so uh, it was a, a fancy three-point hitch when you really get down to it. Oliver was a little behind in the three-point hitch department at this point. The Super 55, well, by 64 they weren't so much, but uh, the Super 55 was Oliver's first peak, or I'm sorry, three-point hitch with draft sensing. They uh, retrofit fleet line tractors with it, but it was just a hydraulic cylinder no draft sensing so it was up to the operator to adjust uh, depth if there was tougher conditions which is essentially what draft control does for you it's a cheater bar in my opinion but 660 diesel those are not terribly common and wide front makes them pretty rare too gasser 770, 880, and another 880. This one's weighted down. They are planning on pulling. Let's see. This is the Cockshut 550, um, the, which is the same as the Oliver 550, as you can see, other than paint. This one must be, let's say 1964. I was going to say it must be a 64 or an early 65 because it's got the two-tone paint job, the tan on top, the chassis. Basically, the sheet metal's the tan color. The chassis is the red color, and the wheels were the tan color at about mid-65, as we were talking about on that 1850. They just went to all red and white wheels, simplified it. There was a Cockshut 550 that they built themselves just happen to have the same model number as what Oliver had prior to the acquisition by white um, their version was discontinued that was more of a row crop tractor similar to like an 880 somewhere in there um, and they didn't change the model number so you gotta if you're a, looking at a cockshut 550 you gotta be specific as far as is it an Oliver built cockshut 550 or a cockshut built 550 or Brantford, as because that's the where their Brantford, Ontario, was where Cockshut had their stuff. Oh, a couple of nice restored implements here. Let's see. It's kind of looking. He's over in the dark last night. Plowmaster 100, very nice. And um, Ross has one of these cultivators. And his was the first I'd ever seen. Um, since then, someone shared a marketplace listing. Someone had one for sale, I think, in Minnesota. And so this makes the third one I've ever seen. Um, just a little three-point hitch mounted uh, rear cultivator, essentially aimed at the probably the Super 55, 550 market. I'm not sure how big they went. Just not real familiar with that one. Rock Valley, Iowa, which one, uh, let's see. This is a 545. 
So this was kind of Oliver's big combine at that point, right before the 5555 came out. And um, this, uh, this one kind of was in the line for this size because once that 5555 came out, the, uh, the 535 combine became the 7300. Now you could get these with a Perkins diesel, these 545s. I'm trying to see. Now this looks like it's got the V8 gas, the Chrysler, uh, probably a 318. I hear Mrs. Oliver guy paging me. We'll finish walking around this baby and I'll move on to other ones while I answer the wife. Not too bad of a machine. A little couple of duct tape leak stoppers. It's not like you're going to harvest a thousand acres for it with it though. But the Van de Word combines and parts from Rock Valley, Iowa. It has come a little ways in its lifetime or someone slapped some stickers on it. Miss these two implements on the back here. Oh, look at that. 17A three bottom vineyard plow. Still can see some of the stenciling on the handle here. Boy, if that got used, it wasn't much. I would say it got used some, but that is neat. Not too many of those old plows left. Oliver built boatloads of plows. Yeah, nice improved Super 55. I think I've gone over this, but we'll go over it again. Improved Super 55's gas tank cap through the hood. No flip open door. Hydraulic filter moved to the front. So it was double feedback um, hydraulic system for the draft control. Prior to that was single fat feedback. There was like a little lever you had to flip here to switch from draft sensing and out. Oh, let's see the word Oliver stamped in the fenders. Other improvements, key start. With a solenoid instead of uh prior to that they had a little foot pedal to kick it in uh do believe more i'm trying to remember if they bumped the cubic inches up or if that wasn't until the 550 but anyways for most part um, all intents and purposes uh more like a 550 than the other super 55s the improvements they did on these last super 55s more nice plows there's a left hand and a right hand. I've been told the German areas of the country preferred left hand plows. I don't know why. Maybe that's something Ross can answer. And maybe he can answer it in German. Yes, Oliver was into boat motors for a while. In the 1950s, the government was essentially handing out money to promote tourism. Uh, so like camper companies that's where a lot of them got their start and there was money for oliver to buy chris craft boat motors they moved production to battle creek michigan and made them for a few years eventually sold them off to perkins of great britain but did flirt with that for a little while we sold one at our dealership from what i've been told i don't know what ever happened to it the gentleman who lived right across the road had it and from there i do not know A few tractors have gone home already with the chance of rain tomorrow and who knows what other commitments they have but there were a few more along here 1800 lp this would be a c series you want to know on that a couple easy ways c series had the throttle move to the side of the dash a's and b's had it under the tilt steering or no, i'm sorry they didn't have tilt steering and that's why the throttle was there when they added tilt steering they had to get the throttle out of the way so it came over here which was i think a good choice i'd never really cared for that being right under the steering wheel and pulling the lever right down into your lap um c series they improved the hydraulics so the filter got moved up front here looks like a 50 series uh, the flow divider 
priority valve got moved over to the side it was up here we basically traded places another good idea because they were sending unfiltered oil to the power steering through that priority valve so that means particles could get caught in air and cause grief i think the original idea is we need to get oil to the steering as quick as possible make it the priority for safety reasons but you really need to uh, filter to also uh, keep it from causing other problems this is a standard um, so the engine sits level in the tub it's got a different tub it's a lot wider as you can see there's lots of room down here same tub was used for industrial tractors so plenty of room to work on them easier to get stuff in and out and like I say they sat them level but they didn't need the clearance under the front of the tub because uh, your standard tractors were essentially western tractors prairie tractors for wheat country um, not tall crops you didn't need the clearance And then uh, another sign of a Wheatland, early Wheatland, or one of the 1800, they were all uh, had these fixed hubs with a tapered hub and a nut on the end. Uh, that went into the early 1850s and eventually that was only used on industrials, but for a while there it was Wheatland and industrials. And they commonized some of that commonality? I don't know, let's make up words while we're at it. Overall, really a straight tractor, nice original. Not too, you know, much cobbling going on or anything like that. Got the white seat back. LP, that's a nice tractor. Let's come back around to the 1655. We can tell a couple things just by looking at this one without uh, getting too close. Uh, we figured out this decal changed in 72 from a triangle like this to a rectangular shape with yellow background. Um, I think it's 73, they went to a single stanodyne type uh, filter, metal, sometimes they're glass, depending on who you buy them from. And uh, this one's been switched over to a uh, should originally would have had an external regulator. I'm not knocking it for that. I'm just saying that's what it is. So let's see what the serial number is. 220, that is seven. Yeah, it's fairly early because uh, um, 55 series, they jumped up to serial number 220001 because they were still building 50 series. And they were up in the 200,000 block so they wanted to jump far enough ahead where they were assured of having enough serial numbers to get the 50 series done without overlapping into the 55 series. Just makes things easier when you're ordering parts and working with service. 1950T. As you can see with the uh, this being a row crop, that engine's got that roughly five degree upward angle. That lets them tuck a little bit more up under here on the front end to get the high, front end up higher. And that's all accomplished by uh, engines the same the rear ends the same it's the tub the angle they cut the back of the tub at and the mounting pads it's still in line with the same transmission you can swap them it's kind of a throwback to when they had the pipe cultivators they needed to get the front of the engine up to get that front pipe under the front and then they just kind of kept with it because like i say it kind of kicked that front end up and they could keep some of that other stuff underneath up and keep the ground clearance, crop clearance. Oh, let's see, what else we got? I gotta go buy a couple of these. One fell out of Ophelia. I'd say a fresh restoration. Hasn't had enough time to change the color on the paint, on the exhaust. Let's see what number we're dealing with here. We'll just do this. These have gotten to be a bit of a hot item. Really likes that. Hear that turbo whistle. 
Ah, uh, we were looking over this 2150 last night. Boy, this is a sweetheart of a tractor. Just a really nice original. Cockshut 2150 front wheel assist. This is super rare to start with. And then uh, you throw in uh, just the, the condition score, I guess, to put it. A few clues here. It was a cab tractor at one point. You can see the lines here. The paint's a little brighter where the cab protected it. But then uh, the nice thing about that, I mean, look how bright red the inside of the fenders are I'm kind of surprised usually cab tractors had a blank plate over the fuel tank fenders so they might have found another set that switched out and it could have been ordered with them but most of them had blank and then they would mount the lights on the cab itself instead of the tent the fenders and there's still a look at me getting easily distracted still stuff rolling in oh it's parade 30 so they're gonna fire up this 2150 and drive her through. Can you back out? <laughs> Sounds as good as it looks. Oliver, 1750 special. You might say, what's special about this special? They were a stripped down version. You could get it in the 1850 or the 1750. And, uh, to compete with the John Deere 4000. They had come out with a tractor too. It was a stripped down model. Um, everything was the same on them, so they could control. Uh, cost of production was better because everyone going down the line was supposed to be identical. Not so many options. And they didn't go very long. And I, I don't know the whole story on Deere, but I'm guessing the same thing because you don't see a lot of 4000s out there. I'm sure more than Oliver. But, uh, you know, guys said they wanted a cheaper tractor, but then they wanted all these different options. Like originally, they were all supposed to have pressed steel rear wheels. Um, and I would say these have been switched because to help make uh, signify them as a special, instead of white, they use this uke. They called it Euclid green. It's, a, it's almost a pea green, um, not quite like the mist green. They put special sticker on. You can see this has had a couple of coats of paint on it at some point. But things they did, uh, they were all wide fronts, which kind of surprised me in a way. But no uh, power shift. That cut down on the cost. One remote hydraulic. One brake latch. Uh, to uh, parking brake latch, I guess you'd call it. You had to lock your pedals together and then, and then you catch it with that instead of the one for each pedal. Single headlight in each fender instead of dual. Um, the steel uh, fender bracket instead of the cast iron one, pressed steel rear, rear, rear wheels. And I say these have been switched because they look more like the clover white than that Euclid green. So someone probably wanted the extra weight. Um, the cheaper non-claw type ball lift arms. Once again, single hydraulic. Still had PTO. I do believe they were a single speed PTO. Yep, no shifter rail down there. Um, just stuff like that, little things. Uh, it does have a speedometer. I don't know if someone either switched that. I was thinking they only ran a speedo tack on them to save a few bucks there, too. From what I remember, they were all diesels. There was an article in the Hart Power Oliver Collector Magazine. I'll put a link in for the HPOCA. You can uh, join. I think you can still buy a back issue of that. But uh, tell, told the story of these unique tractors. They didn't even really put literature out for them. They just had a single sheet sales note that they released for the dealers to help promote them and so they didn't promote them that much and they didn't sell a whole lot and like i say guys were like well yeah i want a cheaper tractor just you know but put all these options on it Don't walk all day. 
Oh, nice 1800. This one's a B. Some ways we can tell. Some, I forgot to mention on that C we were looking at earlier is the serial tag. And with your 1800s and 1900s, the first two digits up here on the model number, all A series were 18 for an 1800. They were 19 for a 1900. B series came out, they changed that to 28. They changed it to 29 for the 1900. C series came out, it went to 38 for 1800 and 39 for 1900. But um, some other telling things the uh, throttle is still on the steering shaft or on the steering column here. So that makes it either an A or a B. A's did not have the raised uh, spear on the side. So you pretty much from a distance can see between the throttle and this, it's gotta be a B series. If no one switched sheet metals and stuff around. B's were mostly about, they did do some beefing up in the rear end, but they're mostly about uh, engine improvements, more horsepower, increase the gas and diesel engine sizes. Um, and then the C series was more about uh, rear end improvements. The C series had a pressure loop transmission, improved hydraulic unit, moving the hydraulic filter up here and the steering for back there, like we mentioned earlier. This one doesn't have a hydropower. But another nice straight tractor. Might have come straight out of the field for all we know. The light bar says yes, we use this tractor. Well, I do believe we're in George Corrin's collection here. George has a dealership here in Canandaigua, so pretty quick for him to move stuff in. Freshly repainted, redone uh, 125 workhorse, looking nice. They were a good tractor, really overbuilt if anything. Cummins engine. White 170. Looks like it came from Plevna before it came to George, which is in Kokomo, Indiana. I think they've got a couple locations now. That's the way dealerships go. Get bigger, get out. 2 win 10. Yep, also George's. If you've seen my video of uh, my collection and on the 1600 front wheel assist, you recognize George's name. He helped me uh, acquire that tractor. It came from this area. So I definitely appreciate George and what he did for me. Looks like the pulling tractor is a little soft on one side. Good thing they make more air. 285, American 60. Very nice. I don't think I have too much left to cover. Maybe. I'll come up that road. I think I've missed that one. Nice looking 1755. Cummins conversion. Oh, they say it's an 1855. Got a 2105 lower fuel tank on there to help add to fuel capacity. Clear piece of hose for the fuel line there. Not a bad idea. Make sure everything's going good. Eighteen fifty gasser. Another seventeen fifty five Cummins conversion. Got a little pop a top going on there, like that. I think this one's just about to leave. They were loading up other ones. Another uh, 2150 cock shut front wheel assist. Dual battery compartments, one on each side, 
four six volt batteries each six volt hooked in a series on each side to get 12 from each side and then those two come together and you still got 12. So I know it sounds good doesn't it complicated but it works or you could just do like they did and batteries a lot better now well they have more amps I don't know if the quality is better but so they especially in warmer weather you can start it with a single group 31. I would say another well yeah definitely a cab tractor at one time okay same before no fender lights you got the line down here where the cab came down generally the red's more of a less faded color inside the cab area because the sun wasn't beating it up and i was with a lot of the cock shuts seems like there's a part somewhere that's showing some green paint underneath and occasionally you get that with olivers where they got red paint underneath and they would rearrange tractors per order they would build some to have on hand at the at the factory and then when an order come in they tried to find one the closest fit the order and switch stuff around so they might pull a hydraulic unit off from one that was going to be a three-point hitch tractor if they didn't want that rearrange that and maybe pull one off an oliver a green tractor in order to get the parts they needed and swap them between the two and so just occasionally see that stuff. Let's see, oh, 2255. Must have been plowing with it. Got the dual hub. The factory duals were cast iron hubs and then they used wedges out here to uh, mount the wheels up just like a uh, most of your wheels and uh but if you were plowing and in the furrow you didn't want to duel so you if you took the wedges off you could take the rim and the tire off and still have the weight of the dual hub and we'll go around the other side here and you can see now this one has both duels on but this would be the land side take all them wedges out and you can just pop the rim and uh, tire out of the way still have that center in for weight that's not a bad idea there paint the dipstick orange so that some dip dipstick that's running it knows where to check the oil 1855 I definitely think uh, upstate New York is relatively good front wheel assist ter territory The uh, G1355 Oliver. This is a Minneapolis Moline up front. Um, I believe this is the 585. Yeah. And then they made it up to uh, over under back here. And then the rest is an Oliver rear end. Gearing's a little bit different in them. Outboard planetaries for uh, the the Moline engines did have a lot of torque, um, but they also turned slower. I think uh, what's, this might have been up to 2200, but um, so they're a lugging engine, but because of the slower speed, if you use the same gears as say one from a 2255 that turns several hundred RPMs faster, your ground speeds ain't gonna be right. So they changed the gearing around a little bit inside to so get the same ground speeds. Fifteen fifty. They're always pretty easy to spot from a distance because they have the horizontal oil filter. They never got upgraded to a full 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 flow oil filter. They were uh, a uh, bypass filter, but they did turn it like that. To, I'm guessing to give room for the, the uh, tack cable and stuff, and I don't know, make it look different. It's a different filter than like the earlier, the 80, 80, 770, Super 88 and that. But the concept's the same. It's just the oil, the oil that can make it through. There's only a small hole. 
you don't want to um, enlarge that hole because then all the oil will go through the filter instead of the bearings so just a small amount goes through to get filtered and the rest just goes straight to the bearings and parts it would normally do so it's important to keep those clean it's got a nice pto cover those are usually busted out because someone doesn't keep the uh this whole top link comes swinging down there and they have a too long of a pin in it and boom pops a hole in that cast cover so that's pretty nice in and of its own See, gasser, hydropower, narrow front. Someone was just telling me you just don't see uh, narrow front tractors in in New York, at least this part of New York, because I don't think I hills, and that makes them unstable. In case anybody's wondering, this is an Iron Bull aftermarket uh, roll bar and canopy. Another 1955 front wheeler. Category 2-3 hitch. You can tell that by these large external lift cylinders for the three-point hitch here and here. If it didn't have those, then the cylinders inside the hydraulic unit, that's a category one or category two, three point hitch. Dual hubs, Cummins conversion. Another kitty. Oh, I need to get mine pulled in the shop. I got all sorts of stuff I need to pull in the shop. Harvest is coming. Got to clean some bins out, you know, stuff. We'll see what I get done. Summer projects. Some are going to get done and some aren't. 1900 Wheatland A series. Four fifty three Detroit diesel talking with a guy yesterday you can see alpine green paint on it it is the original engine but they took it to a detroit diesel uh, service center to get overhauled and they repainted it the uh, alpine green that detroit used you can see where some of the original oliver green is poking through from the from before now there's some on the casting down there Yeah. Someone's homemade creation doesn't make any less cool, makes it more cool, I think. But it's more of George's tractors. G850 is actually a 1755 with the uh, molding paint and the special grill. Not too many of those made. 1755 front wheel assist. What was it? Somewhere in the 40s. The so 45 is the number that's coming to mind. But, uh, not a whole lot of them in front wheel assist. Let's just put it that way. 1350 cock shot. Um, this is a Minneapolis Moline. Oh, and I'm not as up on that model. So I'll leave that in the air, but it's all Minneapolis Moline tractor with red paint. Yep, you can even see right here on the casting. Mini Mo. There's the MM on the block. Cockshut 1655 front wheel assist. We've discussed the whole uh, Cockshut Oliver thing. This is an Oliver 1655 with red paint, um, but definitely a rare tractor. And I can't remember the number on the red ones. Green was, I think, 124, but 
a lot of them got exported and I think it was only around 85 that stayed in the United States. Minimo G350, that's a, a Fiat tractor. Probably one Ross needs. Um, I can't remember exactly which model this one is. It's a, I think it might only be a three banger. I can't count injection lines. A uh, one, two, three. One, two, three. Some number greater, three or greater. This is a nice little original. Straight. Good paint. A little bit of rust there on the fender, but I wouldn't let that stop me from keeping her original. Alright, we'll see if I can talk over this oil pole that's going by. This little uh, Oliver 500 showed up. Diesel. Built by David Brown for Oliver. This was Oliver's uh, first move into the uh, foreign built tractor market. It lasted a few years. And then David Brown wanted to uh, enter the American market on their own and uh, that agreement ended and uh, that's when Oliver got together with Fiat. You may have seen uh, Ross the Oliver man has an Oliver 500. There goes a couple oil pools. A very nicely restored tractor. I think this gets me to where I think I've seen everything. I recorded most everything. Yeah, I kind of remember that one. If not, but yeah, the official tally was somewhere over uh, 300 Oliver tractors, Hart Par, Clee Track, Cockshot, Implements, all together. So fantastic turnout. That's just great. Nice variety of things. I probably missed some. Tractors move around from parades and some people have left because they got things to do. Some people showed up yet today. So, um, hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you in the next one.